As I already know Joe Fiocarino is in the house in the studio. We got Mr. Zane here. Zane is back. Back. Was I gone? <laughs> you might have been for the last one. The last. I don't know. No, we've been on hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had th- we had episodes in the talk. Oh yes, we did. Yes, we did. But actually, no. I think you're consistent. I think you're consistent. But you're just you're just back here back here from the pod. Absolutely. It's not like you were here yesterday. <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess I guess that's kind of what I mean by that. You know what I mean? You weren't here at my house yesterday. No, no. You know, or at the studio. Fuck it. It's, by now they know that we just do this shit at the house, right? Right. Then we have a very special guest with us. What's going on? Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank All you. Right? Thank you. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself to the to the people? Yes, absolutely. My name is Lisa Dominguez, and I am the CEO and founder of Spa O on the Go and Spa O at Exchange. And we offer massage, facials, waxing, spa parties <laughs> in a beautiful facility in Secaucus, New Jersey. And we pretty much just offer an experience and that has to do a lot with mental health and of course body work but we really we really like enhance unplugging and really tapping into mental health at the moment for you so it's like retreating at the spa so that's that's what i do i create experiences for you Look, I don't mean to joke, but I'm kind of serious. I kind of have a beef already with Alexa. Like, you should have hit me and should have been like, yo, let's just do a pod at the spa. Yes. Like, right in the spa. Oh right. Like, with right the in the hot wall, tub. The bag. Yes. That, that's in, yeah, next like, time, next time. <laughs> next time, next time, next time. <laughs> no, because, yo, it looks amazing. I was looking, yeah. I was looking at some of your stuff. I'm like, damn. It what? is gorgeous. It's all right. More future content ideas, right? right? right. Yes. Maybe, you know that, That's saying? therapy. That, while, is, while we. Right? Uh, Without a degree. That'd be Without like the degree. bonus. That'd be the Without bonus. Without a degree. <laughs> Zane could be getting a massage, right? right. Yes. While asking questions. Yes. I might forget. <laughs> do, you, do you think you could ask questions while getting the massage? I think okay. I'd be, be very slow talking. <laughs> okay. Because there's some people that talk a lot. Right, right. And then there's some people that don't talk at all. Yeah, I'm so one of those. So it just depends which one you are. Which one are you? I'm the one that doesn't talk at all. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. Those are the best ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm I'm due. I'm very I'm very due for 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 a lot of that stuff. Okay. You know, the, I think the only time I ever got even close to like at least a real massage, like do you all right because you're in the field do you count like like if i were to say like my ex gave me a massage no no nah. i was gonna say have you received a professional massage first <laughs> on a boardwalk one time in venice and that was about it <laughs> that sounds suspicious oh i think i remember that yeah, yeah see, that, that was, was a long same, time ago that was the same day that we were just talking about a little while ago yeah 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 okay. i forgot about that it yeah, was, you, was that professional or? i paid like sixty dollars <laughs> How was the ending? I don't know. Whoa, 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 no, no. It, was, it depends. It wasn't that one, unfortunately. Okay, okay, okay. It wasn't that type okay. of massage. It, it all depends. Where's my Where's my sound effects when I'm Listen, Oh, my God. Like, I get asked this question all the time because no, I grew up with brothers. So they're okay. like, you're going to be what? You're going to do massage? I'm like, here we go. You know, massages. Like, yeah. massages. He's like, like, massage, massage? And I'm like, um, and then I, thank God I went to school for this where they teach you the ethics oh, of this. Okay. So I was like, oh, this is what they're referring to. So yes. then that probably means I haven't had a real massage. So that means I have to go. Oh, okay. So you've gone prof- unprofessional massages. Unprofessional, yes. <laughs> the massage is without a degree. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's perfect. Right. That's- but those are good. Those are fun. But just not at our spa. <laughs> just not. Just, yeah. just disclaimer. <laughs> we don't, exactly. we don't offer those. <laughs> so, <laughs> so which ones do you offer? <laughs> well, no. The ones we offer are definitely professional. Okay. And if you want to try to come... Not correct. Okay. You know, I'm Dominican. Yeah. Come from Washington Heights. Okay. There's a, there might be a bat underneath the massage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to get a massage. <laughs> like, it's either you get a massage or you get off the table. Yeah, no, but they're professional yeah. there. 
Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so we're gonna have, Zane. We're gonna have to go. Maybe yes. We, we take a hey, where did you say it was the caucus? The caucus. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. And we're inside a, a residential building. Okay. At the exchange by the train station. So we're on the fourth floor. It's all exclusive and all. By cute. the junction. Yeah. Oh, we're okay. Inside of. Oh You're wait, in- we're across from the train station junction. The okay. The caucus junction. Okay. But I know that yes, area. We're right across where those all those apartments are. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really the, nice. The closest thing to a spa that I had therapy related was the soldier spot in um, Edgewater. Edgewater. Yeah. That's beautiful there. No, it's, it was an amazing experience. I was like, I got to just be in my robe. That's it. <laughs> 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 like, it was just, it was a weird experience, but it was definitely something I wouldn't, I, I definitely would come to your, yes. your spot. So what's beautiful about our location is that it's more exclusive because it's smaller than Sojo. And we don't have the salt baths and all that, but it's just, you'll feel more at home. Right. But you still have that little lux. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like a little hidden gem, let's say. That's, that's good. I'm writing down all these ideas for future date ideas. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's owned by a black and brown person. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. Got to support. Got to yes. support. So it's- there's right. more emphasis to that. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be there. We'll be exactly. we'll be up in there. Absolutely. Yes. Do some marketing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we got we got that too. You already know. Heck yeah. But okay, so what else? What did you, what did you do today before coming here to pod and just talk nonsense with us? I know today I was chilling. I was like a real boss today. Felt good finally because I've been working pretty intensively for the past few weeks. So today I woke up, yelled at my daughter for being mad emotional. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Why are we doing this mm. today? Um, I did that, and then I went to I I'm packing, moving. Uh, we're moving for April first, like a new apartment, bigger space. I'm fiance now, so we're just oh, in transition congrats. to that. Thank you. <laughs> so we're just packing a little bit. Then I went to get a haircut just for the show. I'm oh just wow! I'm just yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a haircut at a cute curling place, and then I went back home prepared lunch after school for my kids measured the new apartment because everything has to be perfect when we move in and then i came here so you've been on you've been on grind mode been on a little bit of a grind yes okay that's good now when's when's the last time you have gotten like a a massage or been like for your own like whatever you do for everybody else when was the last time you've gotten that done for yourself so i did two weeks ago um i just threw myself in i saw it was an open slot and i said i need a massage don't talk to me don't ask me questions about payroll don't ask me questions about (laughs) what you want tomorrow that this is missing i don't care what cottons are missing just give me a massage and be quiet and don't even offer me water (laughs) that was two weeks ago (laughs) all right that's good dry massage yeah you deserve that too everyone (laughs) No, I do really make my, I mean, I work there, right? Like I own the place. So I make sure like I, I'm like, you know what? I need a massage right now. I need a facial right now. And I just jump in if I see that it's open. And with with your daughter, you said today, what you had to have a conversation with her? Oh my God. So last night she's like, she was kind of moping. She gets like a little jealous. I feel like with my fiance, we've been together a year now and she's very attention driven. And, you know, my son is 17, so he didn't require all that attention. And with her, she's very like, oh, I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, nothing. And then she starts crying. And I'm like, why did I ask? (laughs) And I'm like, what's going on? She's like, no, my teacher rolled her eyes at me because I didn't go. I asked her for the bathroom. And I'm like, all right, so do you want I need to address this because I want to make sure that your this teacher is not targeting you. (laughs) And um, so today I ended up asking the teacher like hey i just want to address this you know i know how kids are blah blah blah. so today i spoke to my daughter and i said to her i said listen um you know she keeps saying that you asked to use the bathroom like right when you're going to enter the class Mm. so like is there something up with that i noticed that with homework and this and that blah blah and uh, she's just emotional and i'm like where does she get this victim mentality from like this is not for me (laughs) so Mm. that's interesting because we have different personalities what sign is she She's an Aquarius. Okay. I don't know if you believe in anything. I like do. That. I'm okay. all into the <laughs> Okay. Because that's what I say. I'm like, you know, I know what my cousin is. And then I try to analyze. I'm like, oh, no. Are they like the same? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that, too, because I was talking to uh, Jaylene earlier, and she was saying, not that like the rolling eyes, but dirty looks. Yes. I was like, because I always like to go to her every once in a while, and I'm like, yo, what, you know, what topics do you have? Because it's cool to get it from, like, you know, kids. You know, they, they think sometimes, like, way different than us, you know? And she's 15, and she was like, Dirty looks. And it's like, that's almost like the same thing, like rolling the eyes or the dirty looks yep. of like, and especially of that age. It's funny because how, how old do you say is your daughter? My daughter is 10. So around the same thing. It's like, wow, kids really notice that type of stuff. 
Yes. At that age. They do. You know, like, I, I think I, you, we forget because, you know, we're getting older. That they realize that stuff, if it's, if it's coming from an adult, or coming from a parent. Yes. Or even just coming from other kids. Absolutely. Well, they also see it in movies and shows, too. Yes. That's like mostly where they pick it up because they know what it feels like to to receive positive reinforcement. So the moment there's anything negative that doesn't make them feel happy, like oh that wasn't a good look, so yeah. that means there's a problem. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's that's pretty much what it is. And a lot of us we don't really know how to handle uh, nonverbal altercation. <laughs> it's true. You know, so we so th- at that point you just kind of just shell in or you just like lash out. So those are like the two things instead yeah. of like internalizing like maybe it didn't mean anything or maybe it was me or let's process is different or let me communicate with this person about like I didn't like it how I felt felt some type of way that you rolled your eyes at me. You won't really hear that from a ten year old, but exactly. if we teach them how to kind of express that, maybe along the lines, they probably learn how to fix the conflict resolution. Absolutely, and that's what I reached out to her and I said, "Did you interrupt her? Like when you asked for the bathroom, did you cut her off? Like what? What was the scenario?" Right. Because you know, and then also in the email, I addressed her. I said, "You know, I know that children could be a little hypersensitive." <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I'm like, let me be politically correct, because I hear that I'm very direct. So I was like, <laughs> let me not come out, you know, to this white teacher. Right, right, like, right. Like, oh, here she comes. So I was like, let me regroup. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, I said, just in case, because I know we we all go through life, and I don't know if maybe she was targeted today or maybe it was something but whatever it was i just need to address it right so i addressed it with her i addressed it with my daughter and it's like it's fucking exhausting <laughs> it's fucking annoying being actually. a mediator <laughs> yes, because it's like i want to support my daughter but i'm like but is she lying right or was the teacher in a bad mood right and taking it out on my daughter you don't know yeah it can go so many sometimes people could take things like way out of context exactly. I, I remember at I, one time in school a teacher like threw a pencil at me and the way it <laughs> sounded to my mom <laughs> she lost her shit like but it was it was either doesn't matter how she threw it she threw it in a way it was like that that's how she threw it on the table to my mom she thought she would fucking threw it at me it but stab it, you probably right right yeah. but in reality it was it was irregardless you shouldn't throw the pencil in general and then it just set my mom off because at this point, because there's times where it's like sometimes I was exaggerating or whatnot, but I was like some at, and there was times where I was like, you know, what? I'm not even saying anything. So I would just be moody. So my mom would always press me like, what's what's going on? What's going on? Well, it doesn't matter because you think I'm lying anyway. But then when I told her, she kind of filtered it out and then she talked to the teacher and everything. And then the teacher got in trouble and all that fun stuff. But it was just like sometimes it's tough as a parent to figure out if it's a lie or not, because us kids want to just be right. Exactly. We don't want to be wrong. Or we get want, your way. Or, or get your way. Right, right, right. Yeah, like, that's what I'm dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So what what do you say to them? I guess when it's coming from someone their age too though. Like what if it wasn't coming from the teacher and it was coming from maybe a kid that you can't really communicate with? Like how do you go about that? No, I just talk to her. I'll be like, you know, just don't talk to them or it's up to you. You decide how you want to be treated. If you want to feel sad, keep doing what you're doing. If you want to do this, like I'm really thorough with my kids. Like if you want to be a victim, keep doing what you're doing and keep crying, but don't come me, don't come to me to keep complaining about this because we're talking about the same thing over and over. I don't do that, but that's how I talk to my kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so are we done? Like, are you gonna keep crying? Okay, so keep crying. When you want to like rationalize with me, then you talk to me. I don't have time for this. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> sometimes you gotta. No, 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 no. No, no. Sometimes this. you just gotta keep it short because I, I taught for X amount of years, and then kids would be just like. I like just angry and not saying anything. I'm like, listen, listen. I'm gonna let you cool off. <laughs> when you cool off, then we can have the conversation, and then we, we'll figure out a resolution. Because right now, I, I we can't communicate right now. So just exactly. cool down, and then we'll 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 have another conversation, and then that's it. Because instead of me just like going in on them and just wilding out when they lash out, I was like, go take a walk. Go mm-hmm. go take a walk. Get some water or something, and come back. Exactly. I tell it. my daughter the same thing. Go to the bathroom, wash your face. You want to take a cold shower, but right now I'm not doing this. I don't have I don't have the headspace for this, <laughs> but I'll have the headspace for you in a little bit. Mm. So she knows I'm available to her or him, my son, if he needs to talk to me. But this drama shit, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. And sometimes I think like I I'll, I'll tell them too like yo sometimes it's just not that deep. Exactly. Like sometimes we overthink things. Yes. Like I, I even had this conversation with certain friends. I'm like yo it's not that. It's like not that. Exactly. So, you know, like I have one friend who like create scenarios. Oh, I'm like, God. look, it's not. 
even, and with kids, they probably do it even 20 times even more. Exactly. But I'm like, yo, maybe they just hating. <laughs> you know, like, they, that's what I said to Jay. I was like, yo, maybe they just hating. If they, if she was very specific. She was like, it wasn't just a bad look. It was an up and down look. Oh wow! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's Dad, am I am I am I wrong? That was the words, right? That future life is ridiculous. Oh wow! <laughs> Any look can get you. Of mm. course. So the up and down look is even. Oh no, that's game over. That's like very personal. That's a personal. Yeah. <laughs> to me, the up and down is you hating. Yeah, you a hater. Sizing sizing someone up, sizing like what you about up. to do? I'm like what. What am I about to do? <laughs> All right. <laughs> what am I about to do? I, I, I'm going to show you. <laughs> but everything, too, that goes back to actually that there was a topic that I did and I kind of wanted us to get into a little bit. And I think it's actually kind of perfect for that in a weird way. It's uh, your attitude on situations, right? So is, this is a quote, and then we can kind of like break it down. But it's like the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts it is more important than the past than education than money than circumstances than failures and success than what other people think say or do it, it is more important than appearance giftedness or skill it will make or break a company a church a home the remarkable thing is that we have a choice every single day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day we cannot change our past we cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way we cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we could do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you, we are in charge of our attitudes. And that's by Charles Swindle. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I thought that was a really, really fire quote, and I thought that was very, very true on our attitude. And that goes again, like I, one thing we always talk about on here is your perspective on situations, like makes or breaks everything. But I'm like, yeah, your attitude too, like how you, your attitude about life is, I think, super, super powerful. So I kind of wanted to have all of us get into like, do you ever feel like you ever lived with a negative attitude, powerful attitude, inspirational attitude? Like what was kind of the attitude in, in your your life through the different phases of your life and how do you like how'd you kind of change it alter it maybe you stayed the same so i don't know zane you want to start or whoever like you know what do you think well uh, in terms of attitude yeah it does play a major factor um in terms of like where you starting from because like i used to say i didn't like repeating myself and then i became a teacher in 2011 <laughs> and, that, and that shit went right out the window yeah. and i was just like yeah that that wasn't in my favor at all and i ended up repeating myself but then you know you just learn how to kind of say less and kind of be more tactical in terms of how you approach a situation um and like in the classroom, I usually make sure everything is fair across the board. So regardless if you're a straight A student or whatnot, if you act up, you're going to get the same treatment as the worst kid in the class. Like there's no difference. And, you know, if and if the kid who's doing who's really bad is doing good, then I'm going to praise him. I'm not going to just gun him at him just because only when he's bad, I'm going to say something to him because that plays a major factor in the behavior in the class. So like. I take that mentality and do that with like certain peers or colleagues and whatnot. Um, making sure you praise equally as much as you like, hey man, that's not a good idea, or I don't like how you're talking to me and whatnot, and just kind of keep the balance going. Um, but you have to make sure you have solid boundaries. Uh, sometimes I would get upset because I didn't set appropriate boundaries, and then I would get angry and then lash out. But in reality, I never set any boundaries to let them know like hey man that's not a good idea you know so it's like you start learning as time goes on but like you know you learn through experience through different people how to respond to certain situations mm. that's, yeah that's true and then also like how you respond that's a, that's a base to to attitude what about what about you what do you think it is i mean you know what's interesting because we're like in a texting world right tell me you guys don't feel a tone when people text I could read right through that shit. Oh, absolutely. When it's dry and there's no emoji or just exactly. like, it's just like, okay. like Or, or yeah, they're right there. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> or K. K. 
Wow. <laughs> so I just wrote this whole paragraph. <laughs> and K. you just went, K? Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And so the tone to me is super important because I can be super upset right now about anything. But to be respectful in my approach goes a long way. You're, you're going to be more prone to listening to me, not just hearing me. So it's very like, yeah, the, the tone and I guess the tone is the response, right? Because you're responding in a certain tone. So if you're going to be like, oh, and this and this and that and the whole up and down dirty look thing. Or it's like, oh, OK, I didn't like that you said that because X, Y and Z. Someone's going to be like, oh, wow, they could probably empathize with you. They could be like, oh. Oh, okay. I could see that. And it when you were saying all of that, it reminds me of two years ago, I just hired, there was a new hire at the spa and she was just, I feel like she was hating for a little while. And she's like, you know, it took you six months to get me my parking pass. Cause like, mm -hmm. you know, you have to park, whatever. And at that time I was going through a really rough time and it just slipped my mind. But if you don't communicate that, it's going to slip my mind. So it made me like just listen to her and she was like just lashing out like she was angry and upset. And I'm like, she can't be upset at me. Like I haven't done anything to this girl, but not get her a pass. <laughs> it can't be that major. Right. But I looked at her like, wow, that used to be me. I used to lash out at people like this because I was angry about something. So I was like, all right, I'll be a punching bag right now. And as soon as she's finished, I'll express to her. So I said to her. I don't like explaining myself to people, but your approach just pissed me off. So I'm going to explain myself on why you didn't get your pass. One, if I said I was going to give it to you when you first arrived to the building and you feel this strongly, why didn't you communicate that with me again? And she was just like, oh, you were just busy. I said, yeah, I actually been so busy <laughs> to the point that I've been exhausted I've been drained. I've been crying. You would never think that I would be crying. Someone, I'm like a, an owner and, you know, I'm in this, what, this place. Right. I've been exhausted. I've been drained. I've been, I actually cried a week before this meeting. But you would never know that. So you don't know what people are going through. And whatever you're going through, just do me the favor. Don't ever step to me like that again. But mm. I communicated that to her firmly and respectfully. Yeah. So yeah, there's a there's a tone and what was it? It was that just the attitude. The, the attitude, because I think attitude is the tone. Correct. You know, well, how, your attitude will then, depending on how your your attitude is, I think then your tone will kind of come from that. Maybe if you even if you don't really realize it, you know, whatever attitude you have toward, towards the situation, exactly. like if you're angry, like if you know if you're pissed off about it, your tone might come off that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, but it also made me realize like, wow, whatever. I felt bad for her. I felt like, wow, she's really going through something right now. It's not my job to figure that out. We're here to do one task and it's not to help her with that. Mm. But I also had to set my boundary and don't ever come at me like that again. Right. But respectfully. Right. Not like I'm going to fight you because that could have went left. Right. So, yeah, my attitude was, you know, and, and then I also thought after she left, like, wow, I'm really happy that <laughs> I've grown. Because this would have been a bra right here. <laughs> right. So you've changed your attitude on how you go oh, about Oh, absolutely. Things. From being educated and getting the tools, right, from people who guide you, who have more education, to be like, oh, this is why I was lashing out. So I, like, saw myself in her years ago. Maybe not to an authority, but maybe with my family. You know, like, I just was like, damn, whatever she's going through, I hope she gets through this. But... We have to know when to be like, that's not our job. Right, right, right. But don't disrespect me. <laughs> yeah, that's the number one thing. It's just like, like the number one thing for me is like disrespect. So the moment you challenge my intellect or you call, anytime you call me like stupid or anything regards to that, it's game over. Yeah. Like I have to let you down in a very, um, I guess, what's the word? <laughs> in a very non-confrontational way. Um, because I had one coworker before, um, he was like, I asked him a simple question. I said, Hey man, I was like, are we going to, are those chairs for us? Because we normally don't sit. He's like, is that a serious question? I said, yes. And he was like, you're an idiot. <sighs> Mind you, we're at work. So instead of saying what I wanted to say, I had to step into his world. I said, when you get X camera, then you come talk to me. 
And then that camera was like really expensive. So you call me poor? I was like, that's not what I said. But if that's how you received it, and then it kind of leveled the playing field. And then he was talking about it all day. And then I apologized to him. I was like, I'm sorry what I said. And then I just kind of gave him that shook handshake and they're like, don't do that shit again. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it again. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times things like that happen to test our, to test it to see what type of attitude we're going to get the situation. Right, because I just want, I want to light them up. But I was like, you know, you can't. And I didn't really care I was at that job because it would have been my last day. But I said, there's a, you're being tested for a reason. And everything like that happens that wants to challenge my character, I see it as a test. I'm like, don't do it because it's, it's too easy to let loose. Just figure out a problem solve, another way to handle that situation. Be creative. And that was it. (laughs) But why did it trigger you? Me personally, because it was just like the question, what didn't entail, like, it wasn't like an intellectual thing. So you call me stupid or an idiot, especially since you was younger than me. I was like, there's no way I was letting this go. So that's what triggered me is like, I am an intellect. I am very educated. So you telling me like, oh, I'm an idiot. I'm like, oh, no. And especially he was he was a white dude too, so I was like I wasn't letting it fly either. So it was just like it was like it was layers on layers, and it was just like instead of at responding how I wanted to say like certain things, I said there's another way to approach it, and not causing any kind of problems at, at, at this point. It was just like there was a ways to kind of you know fight back, and you know, and then also take accountability for what you said, and then call it a day, and then that was it. Do y'all believe about? You know, like where it says, you know, I'm convinced that life is 10% what happens and 90% how I react to it. Do you guys think that's pretty close to being accurate? Hell yeah. Of course. Wait, what about you, Joe? For me, for <laughs> this, ov- overall, I mean, I definitely, I'm a firm believer in it. I think attitude is everything. You know, I think it is everything. Like, I've shifted my attitude. For the, for the longest time, I probably had the, uh, the main attitude that i had towards a lot of things in life i just thought i, I thought i was cursed like I, I made a video about it one time i thought i was cursed and that was my attitude so i would just go around and the attitude was would cause depression the attitude would, would cause you know loneliness a lot of different things but that's just because i just was thinking that i was just cursed life and then when i started to really change that attitude and i changed my perspective i started to realize oh no like everything happened for a reason every single thing and i was just reacting to it wrong you know because my perspective on everything was wrong so now that i see that i mean that that was a, that was a whole shift in my entire life changing that attitude that attitude is everything like exactly what this says that's why that's why like i really read this quote and i was like wow it's so true it is 100 percent, 90 percent how you react to it and how long ago was the shift like uh for me that? i mean it was definitely definitely like seven years okay. seven years ago you know before that little by little by little you know little things but majorly like yeah like seven years nice it was like seven years up until then i was just like continuously you know like like you have like thoughts in the back of your head because like you said you know sometimes you'll never know what someone's going through or what someone's feeling mm-hmm. so you're just going through you're trucking through you're trucking through you know you're going through the motions but in the back of my head i was like yo like what's next you know like it was yeah. just Again, it was that feeling of just being cursed. Yeah. And then eventually, I woke up and I just saw everything completely different. To where it just it did like a complete 180. And now I realize, wow, I was just reacting to everything wrong. And I didn't see it. So, I just think, I, I, I definitely think attitude is there. You change your attitude on a situation, I think it'll change your whole entire life. You know, to every single thing. Because also, too, a lot of feelings, I think, are really based on your attitude as well. You know, how you feel at the end of the day is based on the attitude that you're giving the situation, you know, because a lot of times when people when people hear that, that's why I thought it was interesting, too, is like when people just hear attitude, they think that's just being aggression or you're being pissed. No, I think attitude is like, yo, being sad, you know, like, OK, my attitude, I'm just going to be sad because of this. No, maybe switch that attitude and maybe now be inspired, gotcha. you know, maybe be motivated. You know, so I, when I started switching those things, that's when life started really changing. You know, just always seeing it one, very one dimensional. You know, people will just get mad or just get sad and they'll have a bad attitude to things. But I think once they start like really digging deeper and then switching that, that's when everything changes. Yeah. Digging deep is, is the key. Yeah. And like self worth, right? Because once you feel worthy of you 
you decide to shift. Like, I'm worthy to not be sad and depressed. Mm. I'm worthy to be inspired instead of being sad. Yeah. So it has to come from really deep in. Yeah. And sometimes, too, you're not, sometimes too, I think you just have to see it. Sometimes you could be blinded by it, you know? Like, you just don't... Because life can life, <laughs> you know, life can hit, life, things could happen that will really fuck up your attitude. Like when all due, it'll just, just, it'll piss you off and it'll just make that attitude, you know, whatever way you had. Cause you know, it's just like anything. It's like a snowball effect. Things happen a couple of times. You get mad, you get mad, you get mad. And then eventually you're just going to become furious unless you, unless you change that. And unless you actually, and a lot of times we don't even think about it. We just go through the motions. You're just working every day or you're doing X, Y, Z, whatever you do. And you're not even focusing on it. So sometimes it's, I don't think it's, sometimes it's so deep. Sometimes I just think we don't just peel back that, that even that one layer. Yeah, that too. You know? Yeah. It depends where you're at. Yeah. But the attitude is definitely, it just depends on your growth because from 15 years ago to where I am now, five years ago, it's just really night and day. What do you think for you? Change what, what changed that, you know, what shifted that attitude for you? It was just going to certain for me. It was years back. Like for, I went to this retreat, uh, the first time it was a client that mentioned it to me, a sister group I was part of. And they were like, Oh, you should go here. And, I was just really in a dark place. Like I had my son. I was a single mom. I was young. I had my son at 21. So it was like I opened my business at 23 at the time. And I was just struggling and just going through a lot of things. But it was almost like I thought it was my moment of, oh, I need to get out of this partnership in this business. And I'm a single mom. I don't know what to do. And I'm going to get evicted. My car got repossessed. Like all those things were happening all at once. And it was like putting out fires, boom, 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 left and right. And I went to this retreat and oh my God, it just changed my life. Like I went and I'm like, how did I not know about this? Like, you know, cause you're dealing with like generational curses. I'm first born generation from my family. So you don't really know a lot. You just know what they know and what they left behind to start here with nothing. So you think that's normal. It's normal to work that hard. It's normal. No, you can't go to school. You have to work. Like, you have to work yourself to the bone. And that's what I was taught. So I believe that, you know. And what shifted was when I saw what this retreat was, I was like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm suffering. <laughs> like, I'm in pain out here. You know, and that I'm, was the retreat. Yeah. Just working hard. No, I went to an actual retreat it was ah. like two hours away in Haynes Falls. It's called peacevillage.org. And it changed my life. This was like, oh, my God, over 12 years ago. And it was a weekend and it was it was uh, the title was the energy of money because I was felt like I always had lack of it. Like I'm getting evicted. I'm getting my car repossessed. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> I need to figure out the energy of money. Right. And I go, and it had nothing to do with money. It had to do with you. So, with, like, with self, whatever's going on. And I just had, I worked so much, so hard. Didn't understand my finances, obviously. And when you're in the wrong environment, you also get put down. Right. That's another thing. So, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> What's going on? So, when I returned back, I said, oh, I have to deal with what I'm suppressing. And the shift was that, to be honest with myself, with I was sexually abused when I was nine. Oof. It's, it's deep. And dealt with domestic violence in my relationships because of that. It's depression. Couldn't talk about yeah. it, you know. So I was like, damn, that's the real problem here. It's not that I don't know how to manage my money. It's not that I don't work hard. Nothing to do with that. So that's what shifted so I had to go back. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. it takes time. Like you said, yes, it, it, right. it didn't happen. The retreat just made me aware that I could see through a different lens. And I was in a safe space. And it's not something that culturally, you know, my family's Dominican. 
that was acceptable. They thought I was crazy. They were like, oh, what is that? You know, whatever. Talking about therapy and then yeah. opening up. Like, we don't talk about that. Exactly. So I had to kind of deal with that and understand that. So I go back. I went back like four times and throughout maybe six years, let's say. So fast forward. I mean, whoa. Maybe the second time. I, I don't think I ever cried that much in my life. Like, that's how much I was letting go, right? Go back the third time, let's say. And I was finally like in a place of self-worth like wow and the say you know when you go somewhere it's exactly the same place like the tree was there i was like remember this tree i remember this room i remember this but it it, it was all the same but different and if that was the shift for me mm. i have to remember the year but i looked at the place and i said wow this is beautiful here even though i knew it was beautiful then but i was such i felt damaged right at that yeah. point I didn't see it the same. That time when I went, I deserved to see this beauty through this lens. Right. That was my shift. But it was mm. the same exact place. Same thing. But you saw it different because your perspective Completely was Completely different place. That's when everything shifted. And I said, I am going to shift my whole life. And I will succeed without struggling. And I will succeed without working myself to the bone. I mean, that took a little bit too, right? I had to readjust and rewire, mm. but I, I believed it. I said, no, I wasn't taught the right things. Not on, not intentionally. That's what my parents knew. But I said, there's more to this. Right. Right? So that's that was my shift in that mm. place. It's really powerful. And like you said, it was just, I like how you really bring up the fact that it was the same place, but now you finally saw it beautiful. Yeah. And you <laughs> said it, right? It's like yeah. a different lens. It is. But it was still, <laughs> it's just, you shifted a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And like you said about people, you know, maybe calling you crazy, all that. They always call you crazy before they call you a genius. Oh, yeah. You know, and you got it. You know, it's 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 hard. But when you eventually see that, it's be- it is beautiful because then you're able to kind of go through everything. All those different things that you thought, you know, maybe you weren't dealing with. Now you could be able to deal with them and yeah. heal, you know, little by little again. Like you said, it, it takes time takes time you know every single thing it takes time stuff we you know we still working with all to this day absolutely but at least now your perspective is different and also now you know the environments that you want to put yourself in you know environments like you said is everything too you know for you you put yourself in you just change your environment for that one time and that just opened up everything everything and i was able to trust i was able to trust another man in my presence, I was able to trust a family member, uh, anyone, you know, because if you think I think about my daughter, even my son being nine years old. And, then, you know, you're you're a teacher, right? Right. Oh, my gosh. I wouldn't even what would my uh, I just wouldn't even imagine what any child at that age would feel like. I didn't trust anyone, but I didn't understand that. Right. I didn't understand like what I didn't trust. I just knew I didn't trust. And that's, mm. no kids should go through that. But, you know, family didn't talk about it till this day. Like, it's not confronted. But I've confronted it myself with my therapy and my my work and, you know, my work ethic and growing through that. But mm. it's it's crazy. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you have to, you know, go back. I mean, I always say, too, it all depends on everybody's different, you know, because for anybody listening to this, you never know. You know, you could have things that you've gone through and you could always be focusing on, on them all the time and they either could bring you down or they can keep you up or whatever, however it is, or you never know. Or maybe sometimes it is something that happened and maybe you just never even put light on and put thought on, exactly. you know, like I, I was through shit when I was really, really young, but I was always focusing on them. So like, cause people will bring that up. You're like, oh, well maybe you just, you, you know, you, you haven't touched upon it or something like that. I'm like, no, I, I live with this shit every day, Mm -hmm. you know, and then, but, but the problem was the perspective just wasn't there, but sometimes you never know. Some people don't live with it. Some people like happens to them. They kind of just put it in the back. Mm -hmm. They don't even really acknowledge it, but then it's still affecting their day to day. Oh, absolutely. Like for me, I drank a lot and I worked a lot. Like, Mm -hmm. that was my defense mechanism. It was like, if I just work to the bone, as I know, that's what I was taught, and just drink it away. Like, when I was exhausted, I would be like, oof, I need a drink. 
that was the suppression. And you start like, conditioning yourself. Yes. So anytime that I need to relax, drink. Automatic. Drink. <laughs> or I need to relax. I need a drink. I need a drink. So that became that habit too. It was like borderline alcoholic, but like, oh, it was it was intense because I didn't know about therapy. I didn't know. <laughs> it was mm. like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. I need to just have a wine, give me a shot, and I'm just forget forget all that. Like, just, mm. let's not even think about that. Did you think? Do Do you maybe like subconsciously feel that you had a feeling what it was, or can you say in those moments before that you just really had no idea? But you just felt like the, that anxiety or you felt those emotions, but maybe you weren't pinpointing it to certain things. No, I mean, I knew what I felt. I just felt like that's not what we talk about. So I had to keep it in. So I felt ashamed. I'm like, well, I'm not the one who did this. Like now thinking back, I'm like, why well, did it do this to me? Like it's still a decision, though, like now that I've grown and I'm matured and have done the work. I had a choice to say this happened to me but since I was trained and or taught to not talk about that I kept it in so and then I felt shame and then you know see these person walking around just normal and it's like oh my gosh how how is that normal but that's what you're taught you just don't say anything but no I knew what my pain was so with attitude as I grew as a teenager when I was in relationships, I didn't want to be, don't touch me that way. Don't speak to me that way. Like I was too aggressive. That was, then that was my attitude, but it came from that. So now that I could talk, it was like talking to the pe- to that person that I'm supposed to be in love with, with an attitude. Did you just raise your voice at me? Don't do that again. It comes from that. Mm. Right. And oh man, it was a fucking disaster. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Cause like, how do you work through things you don't talk about? And then you get triggered. Right, right. So I'm like, wait, did you just touch me? <laughs> so, and then I started using my voice with the wrong attitude at that mm. moment, right? Not wrong because that was how I was coping, but I didn't have the tools until later on, like that the one person that I dated was like, oh my gosh, this is just disgusting the way you're talking to me, the way you, and I'm like, whoa. Like that was like that also made me feel like, whoa, what am what's going on? You don't you don't sometimes we don't see ourselves in the mirror when we kind of get angry. Exactly. And one time I looked in the mirror as I was just like thinking about things that were like problematic and I saw my face change. I'm like, Oh, that's probably what people are talking about mm-hmm. and I was like, Let me let me let me just sit down and sit with myself and understand like you don't look like a person that you're approachable if you have this kind of like look about you or this demeanor about you or if you're responding a certain way so you got to kind of really sit down with yourself and then talk to somebody and then someone recommended um a diary like a thing you could download an app it's called cbt uh, uh diary which is like a con cognitive behavior thought diary which you just kind of write your uh, it'll prompt you with some questions and it breaks down your your um your how to handle the situation conflict oh, wow. resolution and it's something i recommend people download they like say if you can't do therapy it's free and you just kind of it'll ask you like oh how does this make you feel with blank and then what are three different ways you could think about this situation how you can handle it and then that right there was all i need to do and you could just track your has like different faces so it could be like happy sad angry and whatnot and it tracks how many happy you have how many sad you have and then you just keep on doing it you could see like we could go back to those logs and see like what was i unhappy about Mm -hmm. and you start breaking those down it's like maybe i should either remove myself from that situation or talk about that situation a little more because it seems like it's still bothering me and then it just logging your like your emotions and whatnot is is something great to do. But I also realize that you don't don't always log your bad. Also log your good, so that way you can see there's progression of happiness. Absolutely, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll show it to you after. Yeah, yeah and, and and put it out. Um, send it to me too. I'll post it up. I'll yeah. I'll put it out there. Yeah, and I could share this with my clients. Oh no, it helps tremendously, especially if they like if they're looking for something a little budget friendly or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like it's absolutely free. You just have to condition yourself to actually put it on like go on there. and actually remind you too it'll let you know like hey uh did you you know how you feeling today that's what it does that's oh, how that's it prompts awesome. you i yeah. love that and that's why like my mission is to like 
empower people through touch, right? So that's like the whole three, like, is it 360 or 180? I don't know. It's like it's, a 360 experience. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like I went from being sexually abused. And when I went to massage school almost 17 years ago, I didn't realize that we had to do clinic hours. So I had to get massaged, and I was like, <gasps> "Oh, so you thought you were the only one that yeah, doing like it, learning and practicing?" Mm. And they're like, "Oh, switch!" And I'm like, "I'm sorry," but I, I had like a lot of uh, ego, so I was like, "I can't show that I'm afraid right now." So I just like took it, like, "Okay, I'm gonna lay on this table <laughs> and get this massage." Whew. Okay, and I got through it, and I was like, "You know, I'm in a safe space. I'm in a safe space. I'm like, there's people here, right?" Mm. Like, so going through that experience, I feel like you know. God put me there and was like, you're going to get through this shit. Like, and that was almost 17 years ago. So now, you know, I have a spa, right? So right. it's like I became a massage therapist and I massage people and I help them through touch. So it's like, to me, that's powerful. And that's my mission statement is to really empower people through the power of touch. And of course, skincare and beauty, natural beauty and digging deeper into self. Mm. So, yeah, that's like, literally the mission but it's just interesting how i would have never thought going into massage therapy that that was healing me hmm. not just healing the others 100%. you know so it healed me so it's like massage therapy found me and just really blessed and it's it's crazy because you know you probably don't even maybe i don't know if you've ever thought of it but like maybe if you never would have went through xyz Maybe now you wouldn't be able to be so passionate oh, about absolutely. what you do today. Like, oh, no, yeah. I'm fully aware of that. You know, like, oh, yeah. I'm a firm believer in that, that everything happens for a reason. Like every every single thing. And it's like, you just never know. Like, so then, you know, you were feeling what you were feeling about the situation, obviously. But it's like, isn't it wild that you look at now and it's like, wow, it all had a, an alignment. Because now... You know how many people you're impacting? Like you're impacting people, everyone that's that's watching this show, everyone that steps into your business, everyone that follows you, you're impacting like millions of people all the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. That you're changing for the better. For the better. So like, yeah, you had obviously negative experience, horrible experience, mm -hmm. but it's like now look what came from that. Absolutely. I'm like forever proud of that. Like I'm now I'm in a space of growth where I'm happy, obviously, because it happened. Can't change that. To now, because it's been years. I mean, you know, it's been, it's going to be, oh, how old was I? Nine, 39, whatever. It's been a long time. Um, and it's a few things in between. But yeah, no, I'm, it's, it had to happen for it to be this, um, this powerful. And you, and you probably push even harder. I do. Because of it. Yeah. You know? I, I tell people all the time when they go there, they're like, oh my God. This is so nice. This is that. But once they're in the treatment room, not just with me, with everyone in the experience, they're like, oh, wow. Like they get it, if that makes sense. Mm. Like the fluff goes away. Because, you know, I, I've been through a lot of different businesses and being here in this location now, it's been five years. Um, yeah, because I expanded mobily. I was on mobile on, by myself. With the, t the, 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 the bed. Table, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the luggage bag, I was traveling all over the tri state area. Um, in 2014, I launched it when I left my other spa with a partner. It didn't work. I was there for seven years. I went to that retreat, all that, you know, all that stuff happened in between that. And then I launched Spa O on the go, which was just me lugging mm. everywhere, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New York. I mean, you name it, I was there. <laughs> That's so far. And then five years ago, I launched and expanded at Exchange. So a lot of my clients that have been following me from when I was 23 in that wow. other location they come to the place and start crying. And I'm like, what are we doing? And they're like, oh, my God. Because, you know, it's beautiful. And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and not that I'm not proud of it, but, you know, they become family. And I'm like, no, right. come. Enjoy the experience. Unplug. Like, it's so intentional for them to, yeah. like, I impact that. Like, oh, this is fluff fluff. Like, you could go somewhere real fancy and be treated badly. Of this course. is true. This is that's why I said earlier, I create and train the experience. You know what I mean? So just to empower people to really feel wellness and therapy through the power of touch. Yeah. And is it because there's there's a deeper meaning. Yes. You know, there's a there's a strong strong purpose for it. I'm proud of you, yo. Thank you. Yeah, good work. Good for real. You. Because ninety nine percent of people, you know, maybe wouldn't have been able to shift that perspective and change that attitude and people need to be touched 
Like when certain people are very like anxious and upset, like if you give them a hug, you know, they'll calm down. Yeah, that's true. People just need love. That's my love language. It is. Touch, touch. physical touch. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's my, because you know, there's a few of them, but that's like definitely number one. Like on the top, right? Yeah. Yeah, nothing like that. Like it sounds so corny, but like no, hug, it's not. All that shit, yo, nothing like that shit. It's amazing. Yeah. Like no, I no, met no. my fiance. We actually just made a year yesterday, and wow, like God just aligned us at a perfect time of the work we've done together. Like when we didn't know each other to now, and just being so open. Like wow, I would have so proud of that. Yeah. Like I'm so open, and I love I love everyone. And I'm like, oh, like, oh, this person's going through it. You know, you could only recommend that app to people or recommend a therapy session with someone. And, you know, you could just provide right. those type of things to people because we can't save people. Uh, people have to save themselves. But, you know, to provide those little pockets of inspiration and help and guidance, because if I had that guidance when that first happened to me, right. I probably could have healed earlier. Right. Right. So it's so important to, like, Show what tools are out there. So mm. important. Right. I did do better help as well, like on two occasions. One when I was with my ex and then the other time it was just me by myself. Um, and it does it does make a difference to like talk to somebody else who has time dedicated to just sit down with you. Because sometimes you'd be talking and then they'll they'll listen and you'd be like after you say what you say, they're like, okay, so basically what you just said, and they start breaking it down, and you're just like, oh, well, you know, they are trained to listen to what you have to say and then bring it back to you, and then they'll say it to you, not in, like, a judgmental way, but it's kind of like, listen, you know, if you're having a problem with this person, and if it sounds like a duck and it quacks like a duck, and then, ah, you know, then that's a duck, and maybe you should remove yourself from that situation or maybe confront them and then kind of handle it from there. And then what's, you know, what's the worst that could happen is you know they say no or they move away, but that's okay because you're responsible for your own behavior. Your own, that's yeah. it. Your own attitude. Your own attitude. That's it. There's nothing that you can do to change their behavior. You're responsible for your own behavior. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself this question: Is 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 it challenging? Are they are they compromising your behavior? If so, then that's when you have that conversation. If not, Absolutely. then you're responsible for your own behavior. That's why I have two baby daddies. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, um, dumb, young and dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. And then I realized, like, this is not working. It's like the same pattern. Nah, mm. has to change. Right. And I dealt with self, and I was like, okay. And that's why I know now, like, you know, I'm 39 now, and it's like, oh, okay. That's that work people talk about. Yes. <laughs> And that's when, you know, you open up and you attract the right people. But you have to make that decision to leave those environments. Right. Hmm. What do you tell someone that's maybe younger, you know, early teens, early 20s, late teens, something like that, that's listening to this that maybe you would want to help maybe speed up that process of changing their perspective. Maybe they're stuck in maybe a perspective or their attitude with something maybe similar to yours at that maybe age. Like, or what would you tell your younger self? Yeah. I mean, definitely be very careful with who you share that information with because you're very vulnerable. So you wouldn't want to get burned twice. Right. Cause I felt that that happened to me. Then when I was 12, I was like, Oh, I shared this with the wrong person and I got burned. So it's definitely to be very strategic with who you share that information with because not everyone is out here for the right reasons. And to be patient but not closed off with expressing. Because, you know, teenagers close in, and, you know, we were all teens, so, like, we close out really fast, but it's like, okay, who do I, who can I speak to? There's And there's, like, so much resources with the phone. Like, they have access to everything. So you could just Google, like, you know, sexual abuse um, programs or 
I don't know what are they called because you know they didn't have that when I went through this so or domestic violence hotlines and stuff like that because I volunteered at a, a shelter for domestic violence and even that taught me it was like a 13 week program and I was like wow like this is all how I don't think anyone knows about this <laughs> like how do we keep getting this out you know right. so it's really researching because now we have access to everything that you think of. You just put it right on your phone, on YouTube, TikTok, even TikTok has domestic violence, hotlines. I've seen all of this. It's just to really just dig in where you feel comfortable through social yeah. media, to your counselor, um, and to be patient, but not too patient. Like, because you do want to reflect, but don't reflect too so deeply that you get lost and you fall into that depression. In my case, indulging in things that I shouldn't because I thought that was right, right? Which was alcohol, partying, and overworking. So it's just being patient with who you're going to tell. Because if you're not close with your parents, sometimes they're not the right people to tell right away because they're going to react, right? Like your mom was right. like, wait, what? She threw what at you? Right, right, right. So it's like, whoa. It's gotta... like, that's not the energy. Yeah. Maybe we should have talked about this, you know, but it's just like certain situations, you're right. You just can't really explain that with everybody. And then a lot of the, you know, you mentioned that, you know, the technology is out there, but a lot of ego comes into play on like, oh, I don't have a problem. I'm not crazy. And like all those things, because we were so worried about what society is bleeding into us that we we start to believe that we don't need that help, even though we do need that help. So if you put that pride to the side and stop listening, whatever everyone else says, and just try it out for yourself and see if that works for you. And just because it didn't work for the other person, it might work better for you. So it's just like always experiment and then understand that it's okay to seek help. And, and that's the main message. And there's different ways to receive that help. Right. So it's like that didn't work. That therapy doesn't work. But this therapy does or this video worked. Right. right. Like that, like I mentioned, I was so afraid of dogs. And I watched this one show on Netflix and I'm like petting dogs now. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even need a trainer. <laughs> like, you know, those dog trainers. Right, right, right. I was like, oh, OK. Understanding the language, understanding, you know, behaviors of the dog. Like, oh, okay, they're not going to attack me and they're not like in my crotch to like bite me because I'm like, why are they all up in my crotch? Right. But you learn those behaviors and it's the same with people and your situation. So I think that that's, that's great. It's just right. to really just observe who you're around, share those things. And if it is, if you don't want to tell your parents because it is embarrassing and you feel like, oh, they might think that they did something wrong, but it's not, you know, you have all these different thoughts in your head. So much goes on have a mediator <laughs> where it's like they're helping you like hey i want to i need help to tell my parents this and then they'll find a way you know yeah like you said there's there's different options and if one option doesn't work try the next one you know there's like you said the information is out there now it is you know that's um on this podcast i was watched they were like yo with everything like with business yep. success whatever it is like the information is out there now the problem is to, you got to be the one to go either get that information but then do something about it you know, so and put the ego aside. Yes, to actually do it. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. We gotta have you on like more often. We gotta go to the spa. Yes, we, we gotta go to the spa. Yeah, we gotta do. Yeah, we gotta do a pod in the sauna. It's just yeah. hot. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I actually love. It's funny because it's it's one of the things I probably enjoy to do the most. Like I'm, I keep really really busy too. But like I try to always do the hot tub and the sauna. Like at least I, I would love to do it five, six days a week, but at least three, four days a week. I, I have to do it. That's awesome. So like where do you go that you're not going to the spa? LA, LA Fitness. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah that's just, in this town. Right in the gym. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's right. Yeah. But uh, I would love to do it, you know, even more often. But yeah, I miss that sauna. <laughs> sauna. Yeah, because I go to LA Fitness as well. OK. Yeah, sauna, hot tub, all that stuff. That's just it's uh, it's needed. It is. But this was really, really dope, yo. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing no, your story. Of course. Thank, Thank you. Telling us about it, the business it. and everything. You think we can get it for a round two? Yes. Hell yeah. Yeah, you think so? I'm all all right. about this. <laughs> Maybe next time, uh, Desiree. We, we were talking with Desiree. We're going to have to, have to sub in, you know, sometimes. We're going to have to pump. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she'll, she'll, she'll be here, a host. I'll be behind the camera. You know, maybe no, you'll be with out. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. We're going to see how that goes. <laughs> but um, this was really, really dope. This was cool. 
thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. That was great. That was perfect, actually. That yeah. quote and of course, what um. So Zane, I don't know what you got. Um, we're, you know, usually at the end of the episode, we just shout out something we think is dope. Something we think is slept on. Could be anything, really. Could be you know, a show you watch, oh, a movie you watch, <laughs> music. Could be restaurants, some food, okay. a person, just whatever you think is slept on out here. Zane, what you got? You I got, got I got two. Ready? I got two. I got two. So uh, shout out to Megan, uh, CEO of Libelua, which is a beauty brand company. I'm also the creative director. So shout out to her. She just did a pop up this uh this Saturday. Actually, the, the, uh, was it Saturday or Sunday? No, Saturday. Uh, and it was amazing. Uh, I went to show support and it was awesome. My second shout out is the show on Amazon called Swarm. That show is absolutely ridiculous. This is probably the most accurate depiction of a sociopath from beginning to end. And it didn't stop. It like it just got so intense. I told my mom about this. She couldn't like two two minutes and 30 seconds in. The reason why I say this is that's the scene that everybody keeps talking about from that show. So she was like, you didn't tell me there was there was sex and blood and all that. All that in one episode. All that in one episode. That was just a lot of a lot of chaos in that one episode. And there's like seven of them. So my mom couldn't pass like two two episodes and she said she'll eventually finish it but the show is so intense that it was just like like you start to be very afraid because people like that actually do exist Mm -hmm. and it was pretty much the premise of the show was like um like a real a super fanatic for like a celebrity that's supposed to be uh like beyonce and anybody who's a hater she goes after them like like they put like a nasty tweet about that artist she finds them she stalks them and she just she just kills them like on site <laughs> on site like there's no there's no thinking about it just like she just locks on and then just targets what's the name of the show swarm swarm it's supposed to be a pair not a parody but it's supposed to be a parallel to the beehive like the hive with beyonce oh, yeah, yeah. so wow. they call it swarm instead and the mm. character does exist but they change the name and other names for for obviously legal purposes. Mm-hmm. But like they use like real like murder scenes that actually did happen, and then they incorporate it in the show. Wow. Val, did you see this show? Is she here? No, she left. Yeah, no, it's it's actually pretty. If you just watch episode one, you like actually episode one is gonna set it off. Episode two, that's pretty much the character throughout the rest of the show, mm. and that's gonna set it off for you. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So check that show out. But don't eat when you watch it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what you got? What you got? You got anything? Is this like shouting someone out? Anything. Like, anything that you think is dope and stuff down you want to put the people on. Yeah. What you got? What you got? It's like a lot of things I think is dope. I don't know right now. I can't think of anything. Shout that. out to your brand. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only thought, thing I thought of was uh, my fiance, Alex, because he's like. That's a, good. He's yeah. A, you know, he does coaching and I feel like he just understands me. And it's like, oh shit! I like attracted you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like I, you would be this person. <laughs> so shout out to him because, like, to be with a woman like me, like you have to be a real man. <laughs> hey, let's go! So shout Alex out to Perez. him. <laughs> All right, shout out to Alex, man. That's what's up. I love it. You gotta see that it's it's the ones that too. You like sometimes it's it's not that it's not that deep. Yeah, you know? and we it's, never know what they they're going to look like. <laughs> we never know. It's just like, oh, it's you! Yeah. Oh, wow! I didn't see that one coming. That's wow. amazing because that's what he said when he met me. Really? He's like, that's what you look like. <laughs> I'm like, I guess so. <laughs> I love that. You gotta make that into like a like a like a like a jingle. Yes. So, oh, like yeah. like a little snippet. So that's what you look yeah. like. <laughs> I think I might go Zane. I might go on the same thing. Movies, TV, maybe. So Scream Six. I knew it. Yeah, Scream <laughs> Six. I knew it. Movie. Scream Six. I knew it. Yeah. No, it was good. No, it was, it was a good, good movie. It, it, it was cool. It was. You know, I had a couple beefs here and there. I, I thought it was better than the last one. Yeah. No, for the most part. The for end, the mo- for me personally, the, end, the ending was a lot. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do no spoilers, but it was cool. Um, it made me sign up for the A list thing. <laughs> Oh wow! They ca- they captured you. Yeah, they, they got, got you. Me. They got I, I'm me. on that too. Well, I know you're on that, but one. that wasn't. I didn't pay for it. I didn't pay for it. It was a final gift from my ex. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I'm using it. So wait, I'm using wait, it. Wait, did she give you a whole year? She, I think I don't know. I'll, I'll check. But that's crazy. <laughs> I got that's out there scot free. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but who in the world has time to see three movies? Uh, a week. I know a guy. Oh wow. 
<laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. I, and then the movies would be trash. Like the other day, I was looking through the app, and I was like, you know what? I don't. I don't I'm not gonna hold you. No, the, you'll probably get like one good movie that you want to see a week that's out. But like typically, you don't really uh, like see like three good movies that you want to see. Yeah, from, I don't know. Like it just doesn't work like that. Because then the way they they strategic when they drop certain movies, at, like you would have to wait. But by the time you wait, you're not gonna end up watching three movies that you like. You just end up watching movies that like you wouldn't normally see. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. And I'll be like half the movies that they make nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I watched one movie. What'd you say? In three sections in a week. Okay. So they yeah. can't finish them. Yeah, little by little. <laughs> like yeah, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> right there. That's how I, I don't I, I don't watch barely nothing. Like, yeah. I don't podcast. That's it. Yeah. Really, listen to them. That's pretty much about it. Movies. I gotta be like a really really big fan of it to actually see it. Okay. That's about it. But I don't know. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I was like, I'm gonna force myself to try to have some free time. But movies are trash. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah. So other than that, this was dope. Alexa, how we do? It was cool. We did amazing. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. All right. She approves. Yeah, you stayed the whole time, so that means it was good. <laughs> Word. She wasn't like, cut, edit. No. <laughs> this was fun. Add your, add your social media. Say it again? Your plug. Oh, yes. Yeah, where, where, yeah, where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on Spot O on the go, right on Instagram. That's the business page. And Empowered with Lisa. Um, at my personal handle, so it's a little bit of everything, like everything that I do in my life with my kids and my my spa, my business, some fancy stuff. Every so often, people like you know rooftop celebrities. Hey. Every so often, you know, Word. plug them in. But Love it's it. like you go from like a quick celebrity to like being humbled with your kid, and it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, you know what I just did today? Yeah, <laughs> it don't matter, especially with family. <laughs> my mom doesn't get. Oh, that's that's awesome. Take out the garbage. <laughs> 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 sit down talk to me when you're done right right so, yeah empowered with lisa you, I, I get more personal and i i'm like really honest like this like, like just it. really honest and this is who i am very humble and and every once in a while you know i'm in a rooftop fancy <laughs> drink you know i love it yo <laughs> that's how you got a duty I, you know, I help people with your instagrams all the time mm -hmm. and i tell people that's exactly how you gotta fucking do it yes. i do the same thing i'm like yo one day you see me like just wearing sweats whatever next day you see me you never know who i'm gonna be with exactly you know what i mean like you just never know yeah. No. But that's how you gotta do. You gotta showcase all that shit. You, you gotta know? do a little flex every so often. The yeah, once in a while, you gotta throw a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta a little like, do oh, a little damn, bit. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Every like you know, every like six posts, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But this was lit. Uh, also, this podcast you guys already know is brought to you by Jersey Media. I am Zan Studios. All right, we got a lot of dope stuff coming up. Also, right now, we are doing a discount on the billboards. So if you guys want a billboard, all right, we got them pretty much all over the United States. All right, so if you listen to this podcast, you can get a billboard near your city for 25% off. All right, 25% off. Let us know that you checked it out and you watched this podcast, you listened to this podcast, and we will make it happen. All right, just go to Jersey Media and let's do it. This was fun. You guys got anything else? Same? Nope, that's it. So, <laughs> no. Just right. stay empowered. All right, that's all, folks.